we thank you tonight. We bless your name. Give you glory. We gather here in your presence, expecting you to reveal your word to us. Not just for us to know it, but to live it. We ask that your spirit will breathe over this word. Make them alive in our hearts in Jesus' name. We pray for ourselves that we not only be hearers, but doers of the word in Jesus' name. We ask that all of us together, learning all this, we become a mighty influence for your name in Jesus' name. We pray for our city, our state, and our nation for peace, so that we can live a godly life quietly and see your hands in our life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can have your seat. All right, let's get into. Uh, we're doing what I call A to Z on practical living. Uh, somebody said, Pastor, why are you doing this topic? Because uh, I've been a Christian, born again believer for this is my 44 years of being a Christian, a child of God. Got born again in 1980. And uh, I have been through all the stuff in Nigeria. I've seen, you know, when I got born again, churches are not like this all over the country. And I watched the rising and the coming down. Amazingly, can I make you laugh? I remember when I was in the university, Pastor Kumi, you were still a lecturer in the university. So I never knew I was staying at uh, Ekame, Ekaneme Hall in the campus. It's the one that the campus before, that one by the gate before you enter. So that's where I was staying. can't still forget my room number 235. It's not my room. I'm, I'm, I was caught in there. So we went out to evangelize and accidentally we never knew. We knocked at the door of Pastor Kumui to evangelize. So the moment we saw the wife, we were scared. It just calm us down, so we went somewhere else. So I have watched the Christian life over the years in a very, very interesting manner. Things that are happening now, they are not surprising. Some of us, it's surprising. Uh, Christians not living like Christians, it's not a surprise now why our country is like this. So knowing all that, I'm trying to put them together so that we can see some light. And uh, I'm a quiet voice. I don't make a lot of noise, but I watch things and see why people don't do well in life. I'm more concerned about individuals doing well than just a church. Are you hearing me? Are you listening, everybody? You see, if the church do well, if the church do well, like we see all over the place, and the individual inhabitants are not doing well. It doesn't really make any impact. Look at our country now. Our leaders seem to do well. They go with their big cars. They oppress. They all over the place. But you don't want to live in this country. If I give you a chance of visa now to US or UK, you will not even pray about it. Now, you go over there. They don't make such, such a loud noise. They are just... Sometimes even the leaders are not recognizable. I hope I'm making some sense. And you want to live there because in that place, they don't focus on becoming a leader or rise up somewhere and become something. No. They want to encourage the average citizen to live well. And they make everything that way. I hope I'm making some sense. So they want to raise the whole country, not just some people that scramble to become part of political class and uh, so car living it's not just the one that you used to go to church car living it's not just the one that you used to go to church and then when you finish church you leave it there it's what you do day by day and I have seen Christians really do well and I've seen Christians majority of them are doing well and after thinking about that I said let me do some teaching on this let's take to this teaching, and you will see what I'm talking about now. Let's go to uh, our A to Z. We have done letter A, letter B. Let's look at it. We have done letter A, assume ability. If Jesus said, 
or the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, what should I do? I should assume that ability and do something with it instead of just waiting for something to happen. Second one is that the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and add no sorrow. So if the blessing makes rich, I should accommodate the blessing. I shouldn't live life because I'm from Eba or from Ijebu or from Nigeria. I should live a life that's based upon the blessing of God. Praise God. Then the third one is creativity. When I say creativity, I simply mean that you should be able to use whatever you have to get to where you are going. Whether you have third class or second class or you have no class or you are not even that educated, whatever you find yourself as a lot in life, you should use it as a background to move from. If you see in the Bible, people are from different kind of background, but they use it and they give glory to God. The next one is what? Dis- discernment slash disquietedness. It means that you should learn to quiet yourself. You should learn to know that you are disturbed. And learn to take hold of yourself and, ca- and calm yourself down. Let's look at something in the Bible. I won't talk about that for a few minutes. Let's go to Psalm 131 on the screen. Take a look. Psalm 131. Can you look up everybody and read with me? It says, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Next verse. Surely I have calmed, quieted my soul, like a wind child with his mother, like a wind child is my soul within me. If you look at a child, when it's just born, they give him breast milk. But the time comes that they withdraw breast milk from that child and all hell will break loose. She just wants to move to the mother. The mother will push him away, take pap, take something, take serelac. The guy will spit it. And then they say there's no food. Finally, they go pick it. And after a while, the child comes to know that breast milk is no longer available. And what does he do? He starts managing what he has. So he's learned to come quieted himself down and sort out his life. And start discerning that life is different now. Praise God. This is not just what we use in church. This is day-by-day living. You just know that you are retired now. You can't live like the way you live in the office. You just have to know that. You know that your in-laws are one kind of people. So instead of getting disquieted about them, you just come down. My mom is like that. And when I'm around her, I will handle myself. Is that all right? For instance, if you see a child, you are playing with a child, and the child just slaps you on the face, do you take cutlass and cut? You know, it's not a child. If it's an adult now, you can get AK-47. You understand? But this is just a child. <laughs> this is just a child. You should see people like that. People are like that too. You know, you just know that Baba is like that, Mama is like that, Uncle is like that, Auntie is like that, and you'll be able to quiet yourself down. These are Christian virtues that we don't talk about, that it's making life more difficult. Not just making people just to serve in church, do work in church. And outside there, the Bible calls us the light of the world and the sort of the earth, not the light of the church or the sort of the church. Next one is what? Let's go back there. What's the next one? Letter. Uh-huh. Emotional agility. When somebody is agile, is able to move quickly, is able to respond. So your emotional life. It's what you take through life. And uh, I wish I can talk more about that, but I've talked about that before. Next one, letter F, is fasting. You must learn how to be fasting without fasting being called for in church. You know, a lot of times we fast because church asks us to fast. But if you look at the Bible, a lot of people fast in the Bible, not because they are asked to fast, but they want things fast in their life. That's why they fast. Did you hear what I just said? Okay. Now, next one. You must learn to also know the goalpost. If, just imagine, how many of you ever watch football here? You ever watch football? Women to watch football, don't you? Ladies, I'm not here, but do you watch football? At least to share with your husband or with your son or with something. Now, when you watch football, can you imagine you enter football stadium and there are no goalposts? 
There's no way to score. What will you say? If you have paid money, you say, can I have my money back? Because there will be no excitement there. Nobody is counting the score. So there must be the score of life. What are we going to count? When I go into business, what am I going to count? Am I going to just count shop full of goods? Or am I going to count people coming in and buying? When I get married, what will I count? When I walk somewhere, what will I count? So that's the area of goal setting. Jesus said, I cast out devils and cure today and tomorrow. And the day after, I'll be perfected. Jesus was counting the right thing when he was here. He counted teaching, preaching, and healing as his job. In fact, one time he was traveling, he got tired. He had to sit down by a well, and he was waiting for food to be purchased from the town. And a woman came in, and Jesus began the goal, because he knew the goalpost. He started talking to this woman, and got this woman to follow the Lord. And when they came back and said, Lord, what, what, won't you eat? He said, I've already eaten. See, a lot of people are not fulfilled in life. They have food, but they are, not, they are still hungry. They are, not, they are not full. They are not doing what matters in life setting goals and reaching it. Next one is what? Hope. What is hope? We said it's uh, something you are looking forward to, right? Expectation. And we said God promised us the future and hope. Remember that? 29 Jeremiah, let's go down there, verse 11. Quickly, give us. 29 Jeremiah, verse 11. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil. To give you what? A future and a hope. If you are going to live very practically, you should be really looking forward to the future. Depression is when you start looking backward to the future with your life. What's depression? Depression is to look at, see somebody who is saying, oh, I've not achieved much in life. They are only looking back to interpret their future. Praise God. You should be looking forward. Now, there are two parts to this, that's future and hope. I said this two or three weeks ago, that if you look at those words, future and a hope, future stands for the time at your front. Hope is what you are expecting in that time. Now, listen to me carefully now. I said, when you have a hope and you don't have a future, you are frustrated. You have expectation, there's no time to achieve it. Now, when you have plenty of time and there's no hope, you get bored. You understand that? Let me make it clear for you. Imagine you're watching football. I know all of us like football. And you're watching football and they just play and nobody's scoring. It's very boring. Am I right? You say, okay, boy, take a long Oh, what score? <laughs> you know? That's what, you see, when they are just playing, the time is counting, but nothing really is happening, you get bored. But when they are scoring and the game is over and your, your team has not scored yet, he has not realized their hope, time is gone, you get frustrated. Am I right? Have you ever noticed Nigeria, when Nigeria is playing, when they score against us, everybody gets quiet. That's how I know, that's how I know we lose. Anybody know what I'm about? The last game we played, that we lost. I had the first noise at the second, I'm not sure now, then I had everybody just quiet. I said, what's an hour? You know, what's an hour? So that's, that's it. So let's go back. We have seen letter H, hope. We have seen investment. What is investment? Because you have hope, you work today for tomorrow. Amen? I can't go back to that again. I was talking about investment of children. When you have children, they are investment for the future. When you have when you sacrifice to God, it's an investment for the future. We did that, we stopped. And we said the last one, Saturday, last Tuesday, we talked about judging. Judging. Let's read Matthew 7, verse 1. In Message Bible. Can you give us? Okay, let's read it first of all in NKJV. Give us an NKJV first. All right. Judge not that you be not judged. Next verse. For with the what judgments you judge, you'll be judged yourself. And with the measure you use, 
it be measured back to you. Next verse. So, how do you judge well? So why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? But do not consider the plank in your own eyes. This is where me and Nigerians have problems. Nigerians, they are very good at criticizing. They are very good at whoever. Do you know, I was just listening. This is amazing. I don't know if you remember Lai Mohammed. You even call him Lai. Am I right? Thank you. Remember Lai Mohammed? I just had some news recently, just about two or three or four days ago, that he said his work nearly cost him his marriage. I said, ah, this Baba, it's almost 80. So I read the news. He said the wife woke him up one early morning. He said, tell me the truth. Where did you keep the money? The wife said, he said which money? He said, I read to social media that you guys took, took a lot of money. And you, when you are a minister, I don't know, the wife, that's something in the papers, also in the social media. The man said, they will say, <coughs> nearly broke up their home. He said, so, do you know why? Everybody's judging. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eyes, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? So what do you do? Next verse. So, hypocrites, how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck? No, next verse. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eyes, and then you, can, you will see clearly to remove the speck. I can remove your speck if I get the plank out of my own eyes first. So, God wants you to judge yourself more than you judge others. Because the way you work on your life will affect the way you see things. Let's read this in Message Bible, verse 1 to verse 5. Message Bible, give us. What did he say? Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Next verse. That critical spirit has a way of banging back on you. Boomeranging. Let's go. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly snare on your own. Next verse. Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face for you when your own face is started by contempt? Next verse. Is this old traveling roadshow mentality all over again? Playing only than thou part instead of just leaving your part. Wipe that ugly snare off your own face and you might be fit to offer a worse clue to your neighbor. That sounds really contemporary. All right, let's stop there. Let's go to today's topic. All right, beautiful. Okay, so I've summarized again as I normally do. And you know why I've summarized? Paul said, repetition is good for you. Okay, all right. Let's go to today. Letter what today? Letter K. Now, remember our discussion is on a to Z on practical living, right? Right? So, I have many things I can do with letter K. Think up yourself. You think what I could do with letter K. But I'll do something strange because it's practical we are talking about over here. For instance, I can take the word kingdom. Am I right? Praise the Lord. Kingdoms come by power, by violence. You know, I can take that. But it's not really that practical outside there that you can make a lot of noise in church. But what's kingdom? Kingdom is invisible. Or I take knowledge. Okay? Yeah, knowledge is good. Knowledge. But you know, practically speaking, to be honest with you, if all we learn in school, practicalize, we'll not be here today. A lot of things we learn. So I won't go to that at all. I'll go to what you think is not practical, but if you look back to your life and people in your life, you remember them. You don't think about their kingdom usually quickly or their knowledge. You think of their kindness. So letter K is being kind. Together? Now, I know it sounds so simple. Just like breathing air is simple. So, kindness, when it comes to practical living, when it comes to day-by-day living, what, 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 what letter K stands for is to be kind. Praise God. I said, praise God. When you are not kind, you don't leave a good taste in my mouth. No matter what you know, no matter how big you are, so, when it comes to practical living, 
One of the major things you have to do is to practicalize your faith by kindness. Amazingly, when the Bible discusses about kindness, look at chapter 14, chapter 13, 1 Corinthians. 13, 1 Corinthians, verse 4. Take a look. It says, love suffers long and is kind. Everybody, just look up a minute. Just look up a minute. Take a look at this verse. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, does not parade itself, is not puffed up. The only positive thing about love in that verse is kindness. To be honest with you. Suffers long is negative. I'm just patient. I'm putting up with you. I'm not boasting. I'm not parading myself. These are all negatives. But in that verse, there's one word that, I mean, if you are not envious, it may not sue in my life because I don't know what you are envy about inside of you. If you are not puffed up, I don't see it except you are like a balloon. But when you are kind, I can see that. Kindness radiates around itself. So when it comes to practical living, kindness is one of the topmost things. In the love, in the love chapter, is the number two. In fact, we can say it's number one when it comes to the positive. Other part of the, of the verses talk about what you are doing, but in love, the greatest thing you can do in love is to be kind. Now, you know what? We don't discuss that in church. That's why we are not so good to the world. Because the Bible says you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth. What does the salt do to you? The salt makes the soup sweet, am I right? I mean, the salt is kind to us. That's why we look for it. So, kindness is so important in our practical day-to-day living. I'm going to show you in the Bible. People that you remember your life now, people that you remember your life, usually, that you remember seriously, they are either kind to the high degree or they are unkind to the high degree. Are you hearing me? What is being kind? It's to be useful to somebody else. It's not being hard and harsh. It's I am benefiting your life. I'm not thinking about myself alone. So I'm looking for how to make you happier and how to make you better. And I'm doing it in the spirit of generosity. Simple like this. I get to my office. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? That's kindness. Or I can just say good morning and walk off. I can officiate thing. Kindness involves doing things and giving things. Doing things for people and giving things to people. When I'm kind, wherever I go, I leave good taste in people's mouths. They remember me. I'll show you in the Bible now. you see some level of kindness. These are big people in the Bible. I'm going to show you from people in the Bible to big people in the Bible. They were, I mean, they were big. If I mention their name now, they are big. But you know their story? They mention more of those who are kind to them than just anybody else. By the way, the word God himself says, for the Lord is good and is mercy. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We are going to look at certain things. Now, can you look up everybody? Now, can you look up everybody? David had, he was the king, right? Who was David? He was the king, right? He had so much power and fame. And his own son, listen to this, his own son did a coup against him. Did you hear that? Wow. Absalom. And Absalom plotted to remove his father from the throne. And he got some people of David's company to join him. In fact, 
he got so many like Ahitophel, one of the greatest counselors of David. And they joined him. And when they told David, David just couldn't imagine fighting his own son. So he said, let's leave the capital city. So he packed his load quickly with his wife and his bodyguard. And they started leaving town. They started crying. I mean, he was just weeping. He removed himself, he was just weeping. I mean, I mean what would you tell people? Your, your son is doing coup d'etat against you. And so he started going out of the city, running out to go and stay somewhere before the young man will come and attack and kill all of them. So something happened on that journey. Let's go. Let's go. Chapter 16. Let's go to chapter 16 first. So look at verse 1. When, when David was little past the top of the mountain, there was Ziba. Can you look up everybody? Can you look up everybody? There was Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, who met him with a couple of saddle donkey and on them 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisins, 100 summer fruit and a skin of wine. Now listen, this man is feeling so sad, he's feeling so terrible. He had this company, his wife, everybody with his bodyguard. And this Ziba, see, it was put in the Bible. What did he carry? Kindness. How will you survive on the road? What will go on? You know your wife is at the middle of the month. She has no money to buy fuel. You give her some money. That's kind of ziba. You need to ziba your wife once in a while. Ziba your husband or ziba your friend. Huh? Let's jump. Go to verse 5. Mm. Now, when King David came to Bahurim, there was a man from the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Simei, the son of Gera, coming from there. He came out cursing continuously as he came. Now, just you see when Ziba was coming, what's this guy's name? Simei. You know, this other one saw David crying, his son chasing him, going out of town. His son just said, cursing. Let's go on. And he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand. And he said, see, this was, I mean, these were generous, big, big guys. And this guy just, all he could think about is taking stone and throwing at David. Let's go on. Also, Simeon said thus, when he cursed, come out, come out, you blood testament, you rogue. Can you imagine? Write that one on Facebook against Tinubu, DSS will be all over your house. Let's keep on going. The Lord has brought upon you all the blood of the house of Saul. In which place you have engraved, the Lord has delivered the kingdom to the hand of your son. So now you are caught in your own evil because you have brought testimony. Just imagine adding insult to the injury. Let's keep reading. Then upside, the son of Zeruiah said to the king, what should this dead dog cost my lord the king? This is a soldier that was ferocious. One of the top notch soldiers of like, like GOC. And this guy, all he knew was to kill. Please let me go over and just slice off his head like bread. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this guy is so unkind to you in your mess. Let's keep on reading. What, what David said? The king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? Let him curse. Because the last said to him to curse David. Who them shall say, Why have you done so? See, David, in his pain, was not transferring the pain to somebody else. People, when they get depressed and sad, they take it on people. But David said, look, at, look no, I'm going to do that now. Look at what he says next. It's strange. And David said to Absai and all his servants, see how my son, who came from my own body, seek my life. How much more now may this Benjamin, let him alone, let him cause. The Lord has ordered him. And maybe, look at next verse, and maybe that the Lord will look on my affliction and the Lord will repay me with good for his cause in this day. Now, what did they put that one in the Bible? Because kindness marks heaven. Kindness marks heaven. Remember that man, Cornelius? He said, Your kindness, your charity, and your prayers. This is only your prayers. Let's jump. Chapter 17. I want to bring up some people there that, that, that did some things more for David. 
Let's go toward the end of chapter 17, verse 24. 17, 24. That David started traveling. He was going out on the road. Then he got to Mehinahim. Uh, please, I want you to see this. And Absalom crossed over the Jordan. He and all the men of Israel, they are coming after David. Let's go next verse. Absalom made Amasa captain of the army instead of Joab. This Amasa. Let's jump. I want to jump quickly. So Israel and Absalom encamped land of Gilead. They were like opposite like that. Look at next verse. Now, everybody, look. can you look up to this one? I'm going to show you something about kindness. So now it happened when David had come to Mahanaim that Shobi, this, why are they mentioning their names? I mean, the Bible stopped to mention their names. Why? Because kindness is a significant thing before God. Love. God is love. So love is kind. So we notice kindness. He said that Shobi, the son of Nahas from Rabbah, people of Ammon, Maki, the son of Amiel from Lodiba. Mark that next name. I'll we'll come back to him later. Basili. I want to be like him. I'll tell you why I want to be like him now. But see that word Basili? Mark it. Basila declared that from Rojahim. That, that's, that, you see, that man, you don't know him. Very old man. I'll show you a minute. Let's keep on reading. And brought beds and basins, earthen vessels, and wheat, barley and flour, part grain and beans. Why is the Bible, the book of heaven, mentioning all those normal idiot things that we all use? How many of you remember you ate, when last did you eat beans? Huh? Grains. Patch seed. Let's go on. Honey and corn, sheep and cheese of the earth for David and the people who were with him to eat. For they said, People are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. What, what simple things. You know, we are thinking that something spiritual, something great, something mighty. Fear, kind. You see, your children will remember how many night vigil you attend. They will remember how gracious and kind you are to them. You know, my children have been in church for years. They don't remember all my big sermons, powerful sermons. They remember how daddy was just gracious and kind. If you ask, if I ask you about somebody now, the very first thing that runs through your mind is, oh, he was nice to me. Oh, he was bad to me. No, he was too harsh. He just didn't understand me. That's the way you judge people. It's on their kindness. They were hungry, they were weary, they were thirsty, they were tired. So, letter K stands for being kind, kindness, for practical living. I may know the kingdom of God, I may have knowledge, but I refuse to make letter K kingdom or knowledge because it's practical living. The practical living is this you are hungry. Jesus said, When I was, remember that story? He put the sheep and the goats, and he said, He didn't say, Okay. Yeah, he didn't say, uh, the sheep, you are always praying and always going to third heaven. He said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me. Practical. That's remembered in heaven. Kindness. Then the other one, what is it? When I was hungry, you never bothered. You look, look at your children, you look at their shoes, you know it's tight. You start looking for how to get them another one. Your children. Oh, no, don't waste your time on that. You got a friend. You saw his wristwatch. His thing is almost cutting off. You notice that. What can you do about that? Huh? See, these are, these, are, these are small, small things. I saw you in the life of David. But I told you there was a man called Basili. So, after they fought and they killed Absalom, and he's coming back. The government is coming back now to David and going back to the land. Let's look at what happened. Chapter 19, is it? So they're bringing David back. Verse 15. Now let's look at it. This is interesting now. Hallelujah. 
There's so much to read. Then the king returned and came to the Jordan. And Judah came to Gigal to go to meet the king, to escort the king across the Jordan. What happened next? And Shimei, remember Shimei? Huh? You know, you should be careful when you are harsh and hard. You may, it may not turn out the way you think. That guy you are harsh to, maybe the boss, how your child will work tomorrow. <laughs> Let's go on in. Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite who was from Bahurim, hurried and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. You know, he thought that the kingdom would belong to Absalom. So now the things have been reversed. Nigeria has won. Togo lost. <laughs> Let's go. There were thousand men of Benjamin with him and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, 15 sons and 20. Let's go on quickly. Let's jump. Next one. I want to show you where the man said. Oh, oh, then he said to the king, do not let my lord impute iniquity to me or remember what wrong your servant did on the day that my lord the king taking the king should take it to the ark. No, don't take, don't take it to the ark. Let's keep on reading. For I, your servant, know that I have sinned. Not being kind is sinful. Therefore, here I am, the first to come today of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. Let's go on. You see, what's the, is it the same outside again? You see, the remember outside? Soldier, headquarter. Huh? I said, so, I said, shall I see men be put to death for this because he caused the lost anointed? Mm-hmm. What David said? I love, you know, David was just, sometimes troubles make you better. If you have suffered before, you, you go through suffering with some level of, you know. David said, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zerua? That you should be a, my enemies today. So I enemy be put to death today in Israel. For I do not know that today, I do not know. For do I not know that today I'm king over Israel? I'm the king. You know, being cruel is not a right approach for any Christian, a child of God. I don't care whether you speak in tongues or prophesy every minute. The Bible says that if I speak in tongues, home of angels, I don't have love, kindness. I'm just a noisy gong. Interesting. So being kind is the key thing we carry through life. Whoa. Let's keep reading. Therefore, king said to Shimei, shall not die. The Lord swore, the king swore to him. I won't touch you. My son will deal with you, not me. But I told you about that old man. I want to mention Basilai. Let's finish with Basilai. My time is up. Glory to Jesus. Are you here still with me? Let's find Basilai. Verse 31. And Basilai, the Gileadite, came down from Rojim and went across the Jordan with the king. You know, he gave him bread, honey, cheese, grains, beans, remember? When David was fugitive running around and was running away from his son. I wish we had more Christians like that. You know, I had Wiki, you know Wiki. All of you, if you don't know Wiki, you're not in this country. You know, it's always blah. So I saw him. You know something said yesterday now on the news that you church leaders don't forget us politicians who. He said, after we have left office, remember us. <laughs> he said, when we are in the office, you are all around us now. We checked out. Kindness. Let's go on to escort. You know, he even came to. Now I love this. Now Basilai was a very aged man, eighty years old. And he had provided the king with supplies while he's there. My name, for he was a very, I want to be like Basilai. I want to be a very rich man and an old man. Praise God, somebody. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> and I think kindness was his pathway there. Old man, very rich. Can you imagine supplying the king? Can you just imagine that Tinubu comes to town and you're the one to supply him his food? Let's keep reading. And the king said to Basilai, come across with me and I'll provide for you while you are with me in Jerusalem. Come stay with me in the capital city. Come to Abuja. I'll give you a place in Asurok. Remember, Buari with his cousin or something. 
I'll give you a place to stay. Look at what he said. Old man. But I said to the king, how long have I to live that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I'm rich. I'm okay. I'm, I'm having, I'm don't, I don't need another house. I'm, I'm a rich man. Let's keep on reading. I'm today 80 years old. Can I design between good and bad? Can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any longer the voice of singing men and women singing men? Why then should your servant be a further body? See kindness. See, one of the greatest things about kindness is that you don't want to body anyone. You don't, you don't want to squeeze anybody. You don't want to choke them. Are you hearing me? Now, I know some of you may not believe this. Uh, one time I had to travel abroad to stay with my brother. But just before I traveled, my brother didn't finish his house. He was doing some construction. So I had already bought the ticket and I must leave next week. And I was just stranded. So I was thinking, and I don't want to go and spend money in the hotel. I could keep that money and do something more with my life. So you know, my wife, I said, oh, there's a young lady that came for, with her husband, that came for, uh, I think her mother's burial. Yeah, because the mother, when they were very small in church, that's the beauty of a pastor. People, you watch them grow. Now, the mother died, the king, that's in the UK, with her husband, and he said, Pastor, anytime you want to come to, you can just check us. The two kids they have. And my wife said, maybe we should just call them, maybe they will accommodate you. So my wife called her and said, my husband uh, needs to just have a place to stay. He said, please let him come over. Oh, that was, that was really heavy for me. So, and that very beautiful home with their two kids, a boy and a girl, the girl first, the boy. When I got down there, I'm not reverend in church, they see me as reverend. I wash the plates in the kitchen when they go to work. Back and say, Reverend, don't do that. I said, Keep your in this house now. Now they go to work, they go, they go quite early, come back, and the kids will be in school. I told her, I said, While I'm around now, don't worry about the kids. I will walk to their school and bring them home. It's my holiday, just two, three weeks. So I get up huh? and go with them to. To go, to go to this kids, he said, you just see me, they have to tell me that I'm the one to come and pick them or else security, they won't let me enter. So I got down there, these kids just come together. The way they talk sometimes, you don't hear them, all these British girls. <laughs> you know? So we just go, we just, they call me Big Daddy. So we just, we just go, we just play. You know, see, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, how can I be kinder to these people? How can I, can I sit down with them? And, and So we go, come back, go, do wrong. And one day something happened that just thrilled me. So, I said, okay, let's tell stories. So I said, I told them the story of Esther. When I finished, I said, hey, big daddy, tell us more stories. 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 And we started telling stories. And I was about to leave. They came to their parents with all seriousness that big daddy must not leave this house. Ah. They said, he's a pastor in Nigeria. He said, tell him to bring his church to UK. You can't carry a whole church to UK. You know, so after a while, they said, okay, you know what we're going to do, Daddy? Since he can't move, let's all of us move to Lagos. <laughs> when the light goes off for six hours, you want to think of going back to UK fast. <laughs> you know, you just like that. So that Get back to my telling stories to children on podcasting. And I, I'm not going to have to go back to it again. And, and just, just, just kids, you know, I have a lot of kids in church. They're my friends. Just be kind. Just be nice. Huh? Praise God. Are we here? Kindness will open the door for us to a lot of things in life. It's practical. It's very practical. Now, let me show you one before I close. Our time is almost up. I told the life of David, how kind he was that Basilai was marked out. Can I finish this story? No, you know, no, Basilai was telling, I don't want to be burdened to you. Look at next verse. 
But he said something very interesting. Your servant will go a little way across the Jordan with the king. And why should the king repay me with such a reward? When you are kind, you are not looking for they pay me back. You just do things because that's who you are. You're not looking for a reward. You're not looking at what you're coming at. My move full away and talk with the coming at. In fact, look, look at Matthew 5. No, no, I, I, Matthew 5, I'll show you. And what's with the king? I'm today. Next verse. Next verse. Please let your servant turn back again that I may die in my own city near the grave of my father and mother. But here is your servant, Chimna. Let him cross over with my lord, the king. And do for me what it seems good to you. Do for you. See, that's his son. He said, look, I'm not going to be struggling anymore. I'm old. Let my son enjoy that privilege. You see that kindness? Huh? Some people, you give them a gift like this. They don't need it to F for me. Let the other person go. Are you where you live? These are the things that will make so much difference in our culture. That's why we want to go abroad. They built on life like this. Hallelujah. We are surprised when somebody picks nine million as a waiter and give it to the owner of the money. We all celebrate. They go and give them OFR. It should be a normal thing we live by. So, you recommend that one. Let's, let, me, let me close with this one. Chapter 1, 2 Timothy, about being kind. Now, it doesn't mean you are wishy-washy, but you are doing things for people for their benefit and for their good. Even when you have to say no to them, you do it kindly. Hallelujah. One should not be harsh and rash. Remembering that we have a life to live and we have our own family too. Which, let's go. Second Timothy chapter 1. This is Apostle Paul. This is the last book he wrote in the Bible. This is his story toward the end. Can you imagine this mighty man of God? Second Timothy was his last book he wrote. He said, I'm about to die. I'm being taken up. I fought the fight. Good fight. I've kept the faith. Remember that story? But something, can you imagine? It's full of knowledge of God, kingdom of God. But he said this, chapter 1, Second Timothy, verse 15. Take a look. I mean, this is Apostle, old man now. This you know that all those in Asia have turned away from me. He expected them to be kind. Among whom are fi jealous and emogenous. These guys enter the Bible as bad guys. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Every time with Timothy, you remember, fi jealous and emogenous. Maybe later say Paul, about your group, about your group, about your group. already. But look at this verse. The Lord grants, this is Paul now, talking to his project, his son, Timothy. The Lord grants mercy to the household of honest for us. He picked him out. For he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. We all talk about Apostle Paul is a great man. He's a mighty man of God. But one time he was in chain. And everybody will avoid a prisoner. When I was in prison, you visited me, remember? By the way, we have a prison work. Church is doing. By the they can Stephen. They go over there and feed them. Last Sunday, a prisoner was released and came to service with us over here. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Oh, it's not a shame of my chain. You know, you know it's, Paul, Paul noticed him. He, 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 Paul will see angels and revelation and visions. Paul, you see kindness too. Let's keep reading. Look at him. He said, but when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out very I was taking note of that. It took the pain to find me. You know, you won't count this as spiritual. One man took his son for fishing. When he was young, the son wrote in his diary, what a great day. The father wrote in his diary, what a wasted time. He's a business executive, but they have to go fishing with this kid. So you have to waste your life sometimes for people. Just be kind. Look at next verse. The Lord, you see, Paul kept on praying. The Lord grant to him that he may find mercy 
from the Lord in that day. That means what he did to Paul, suppose something like that, will be counted on the last day in heaven. The day of, they said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. I mean, you don't think that God will count that. God will count only apostles and prophets making boundaries and preaching great crusades. And you know very well how many ways he what? Minister to me. Can you see that? The last chapter of that last book, of that, of that last book of Paul. Let's read it. Verse 14, chapter 4, verse 14. Alexander, the coppersmith, did me much harm. Why did you remember those things? So I told you that in your life. People that remember, people that did so much good or did so much evil. That's what you remember. May the Lord repay him according to his work. Me, of course, Allah has some Remember, look at next verse. He said, You also must beware of him. He's a cruel guy, he's a mean guy, for he has greatly resisted our words. See that? So, that's the way to live. Now, I am not saying you should go around and say, Pastor said we should be kind. Okay, I'm kind, you can I be kind? I don't mean that. But in your little way, Pastor, why do you teach things like this? I don't teach Jim Jim stuff. Jim Jim things won't make things impression outside there. Jesus said, there was a man that was knocked down by armed robbers on the way to Jerusalem from Jericho. And the priest came with all the sacrifice and passed by. And the Levite came, assistant pastor, and passed by. And then this Samaritan came. And today, anywhere you say good Samaritan, you know what it means. Simply kindness. To just stop paying attention, do something, give something, touch a life. That's all. That's all. Do you know that that's making my pastoring easier? I notice that the kinder you are to people, the more they want to flock around you. It's just it. Just be nice. For no reason. Whatever you can do. My, my regret as I grow older, my regret is that I've not done enough being kind. For instance, my dad died about... Uh, almost about 15 years ago. My regret was that I didn't do as much as I could do like I would do for my mother now to him. That's my regret. So we must have that kind of thing in life that to be a practical person, Basili and Onesimus, let's be like this. And I want to show you in the life of Paul, when my time is up, how Paul himself, as an aged person, Start demonstrating kindness. Philemon, only one chapter in the Bible between Hebrews and Titus. Take a look. Verse 8. Kind. So he wrote this Philemon. Philemon was uh, one of the members of the church that Paul founded in Colossae, he and his wife and Archippus. So he, he finished, he was now old man, said, therefore, though I might be very bold, can you give us an NLT? It will be, be easier to read there. Let's read it. It'll be. This one, I'm boldly asking a favor of you. I could demand it in the name of Christ because it's the right thing to do for you, for you to do. Let's go on. But because of our love, I prefer simply to ask you, consider this as a request from me. Paul, an old man. You know, this kind of task, we don't read them. <laughs> and now, also a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus. What is he begging for? This was a letter that was so highly acclaimed. Let's keep reading. I appeal to you to show kindness to my child. Onesimus. I became his father in the faith while here in prison. Who was Onesimus? Onesimus was the slave of Philemon who ran away from him. 
So he ran to the city of Rome, where Paul was a prisoner. And one way or the other, they jammed. And then Paul began to work on him till he got born again and got saved. And I said, your boss, oh, that's my church member. Let's go on reading. Onesimus hasn't been of much use to you in the past, not kind. But now, it's very useful to both of us. Go on. I'm sending back to you, and with him comes my own heart. See, just, just standing for being kind, old man. Next verse. I want to keep him here with me while I'm in this chains for preaching the good news. And he will have helped me on your behalf. But, next verse. I didn't want to do anything without your consent. What? I mean, can you imagine you want to go and visit your children and tell them, Bawuni <laughs> Kingwa? That's, that's kindness. Not showing up at their door. And say, Mode, that year, so for one, it means that year. It means Mobile, we could do a break with Mobile Wally. I wanted you to help because you are willing, not because you are forced. It seems, it seems you lost Onesimus for a little while so that you could have him back forever. Not as a slave anymore, but brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's keep reading. I want to follow. I'm just trying to see kindness. It's no longer like a slave to you. It's more than a slave for his beloved brother, especially to me. Now, it will mean much more to you, both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. What about all the past mistakes? Maybe, maybe he stole some money from, from his boss. Let's keep reading. So, if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you welcome me. Next verse. If he has wronged you in any way or owes anything, owes you anything, what? Where will Paul get the money? He's not a small boy. <laughs> I mean, a whole king wanted bribe from Paul. Paul was not a small boy. He said, whatever that boy owes you, charge it to me. But Paul was very smart, an old man, kind. Look at what he says next. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it. And I won't mention that you hold me your very soul. As a diplomatic ambassador of Jesus. <laughs> Can you see all this? He was rash and tough when he was younger. He was getting kinder, more beautiful as life going on. I want to be like that. Anybody want to be like that? I want to be like that. Let's round up. Next verse. And he says, yes, my brother, please do dip me this favor for the Lord's sake. Give me this encouragement. See, we see, lay down his life for somebody else just to be recommended. That's it. I told somebody something as I ran down. I said, when you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, something you notice, where Jesus touched the multitude is only one or two verses. And Jesus healed them all, and the crowd came and touched him. But when it comes to individual, you see, they will slow down the story. And there was a man, his name was Jairus, and he came to Jesus, and he fell before him, and he said, my daughter is at the point of death. And Jesus got up and followed, and while he was going, there was a woman who came behind. See, the major more on individual case stories than on the multitude. We believe that when we have multitude, they say, they sold three million cars in Nigeria, but I only buy one. And that one, how is, it, how is it doing to me? So you can see stories of Jesus. It was about Nicodemus coming in the night. About Jesus slowing down at the well, talking to a woman. Huh. The Lord is very kind. And he's still very kind. And to us, he keep on being kind. In fact, he wants to crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Let's just thank him and say, Lord, thank you today that... Your kindness is all over our lives. Your kindness is our trademark. Without your kindness, we'll not be here today. We bless you. We worship you. And Lord, help us to become more like you. That's who you are. We want to be more like you, to be kind, with our life generous, so that the practicality of our faith will be seen among people. And they will see us walking in your life every day. Thank you. Thank you for helping us to live this life of kindness that marked by love 
that comes straight from your heart. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we clap our hands for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. I want us to read the verse as I round up this. Let's go to Matthew 5, verse 43. I'm looking for this verse. Are, okay, let's, let's read from there. Just a minute. Let me get another look. I think it's in Luke 2. We look chapter 12. Just a minute. I want us to read something else. That's just like that. Luke 6. Yeah. I want to mention the particular word that I saw. Yeah, good. Yeah, let's go to Luke chapter 6 better. That is it better. Luke 6, 35. But love your enemies and lend. Open for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you'll be like what? So you'll be actually sons of the Most High. So being a son of God, just demonstrating power. Being a son of God is demonstrating his own nature of loving kindness. And he says, for his kind to to Nothing makes you as sad as somebody. You do something for, and you turn around and act as if you are nobody. Man, it could be painful, but it could become a point of growth for our lives to, to be like our father. It's kind to the unthankful and evil. You know the next verse? Therefore, the merciful, just as your father also. See, this same verse when you go to Matthew 5, it says, be perfect. Oh, interesting. So being perfect, being merciful. Wow. Praise God. Beautiful. I think we learned something. Okay. Uh, let's ask one or two questions before we read our book. And then we'll come back. Anybody want to ask any questions? Patrick, it's Patrick, you know? Patrick. Somebody always ask. When you do this to people, they always pay you back. If what do you do? You know the answer now. Okay. Anybody want to ask any question? Yeah. So let's know around. So Tunde, come and help me. Can you grab that microphone? Is the microphone available? Oh, they didn't put it there because we don't use it. Anybody else you have? Uh, so that we know how many people want to ask questions. Anybody else? P pretty simple. You know, Abraham's wife became pregnant when he prayed for other barren women to get pregnant. And this one's get pregnant, this wife get pregnant after. Praise God. Interesting. Yes. Okay, I hope they have a microphone they can use over there. Okay, good. Thank you. Just a minute. Bear with us. All right. Is it working? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's have somebody here at the front. Peter has a question. My question is that with this uncommon Christian way of life, I mean, in the society, Same on us. Uh, I mean, come on, come on. It's, is, it, is it synonymous, being kind, is it synonymous to being stupid? What do we do? Be, be when being stupid. People think us to be dummies and dullards or foolish when we are being kind. With them. Like, they want to rip us off, take advantage of our kindness, how do we do it? How Thank do we you. leave Thank it? You. I, I think if we say kindness is stupid, then God is stupid. God is kind. And he has been stupid all these years. He's never lost his power. So we must, we must stop interpreting our life by others' thinking. We must be interpreting our life based upon our father. You know, if I want to think like a dog, I will not be on my two feet. <laughs> I'll be like this on the floor. So we must not let the world around us. The world is wicked. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. The world is wicked. But God is asking us to just be. In fact, that is the greatest thing you can do as a Christian. Not just to talk. Not to hand out tracts and make noise and put signboard. Rock Foundation, annual convention. Proud advertiser. <laughs> no. The real thing is that you be. 
like be the salt. I'm making some sense. So don't count it that stupid. Ah, uh-uh. is the smart way that has been everlasting with God. This way God has been behaving all eternity. That's why it's God and devil cannot take his place. You know, what happened in the garden was the devil called Eve stupid for following God. He said, uh-uh. God, uh, are you really sure what God is saying? God, God is just, he wants to don't know. And then he stepped in and messed up everything we are facing today. So popularity, popular opinion is not our answer. Hallelujah. I'll tell you one guy. Maybe this will help you. Practical now. That this young man that used to come and see me years ago, come to my office. A pastor, I'm in trouble. He's not a church member. Just walking. And then he will say, ah, I need help. My father is dead. My mom is struggling. So I'll give you something. Then he enters school. So come in, we remember him now. I say, so come in. Follow him to the market. Get some clothes for him. Buy something that's cheap. Then have him go there. Then come around again. Then tell me he's going, he went to FBI. I will just come around. I will just pity him where he is. Give him some money. I didn't see him again for months. So one day he just showed up in my office. He said, I'm here to make a decision. I said, what's that one? He said, I've been lying to you. I was listening, not serious. But God got hold of me. I said to him, I said, you can't be spending money. You can't be spending my money. I think I'm stupid. It's God's money. <laughs> God's going to come after you. Today, he's a minister of the gospel. He's changed around me. So when I even look stupid, the Bible says the foolishness of God is rather than the wisdom of man. So, but don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that somebody's going to go and smoke Ganja, dear, it's irreverent. It be kind to me. Be kind to me. I'll be kind to him, take it to my sister's place to go and eat, not to go and buy ganja. Of, of course, I won't give him the money. I'll give him out the money to make the food for him and let him eat there. Does that make some sense? All right, so we, we do that. Okay, anybody else? Yes, thank you. Practical living. Yes. Before you. You, before you start, can I say this? Do this at home first. Start with your friends. It will be easier there. Don't go to a level who will fight you and hate you. Don't start with that one. You may be discouraged. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine? You take a child to school and say, let's do it. I'm calculus. And it's better A, B, C, D. So don't start with If you have a problem with people, don't start with that. Start with home team. Nobody plays word game at the beginning of their game. So don't all these people like that. Look, let's just start finding people we can be kind to. If you can't do it with adults, do it with children. Right? Children won't do things to you like that. So start practicing first before you start meeting all these big giants that want to knock you out. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Uh, how can we handle this uh, forgive and forget? According to the second Timothy you read for us and the yes. Paul mentioned uh, honey sin, that... Are you looking for excuse not no, to no, forgive? No, 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 sir. No, not at all. I'm just joking. Not, I'm just joking. Not at all, sir. You know, when you are being kind and, you know, people around, around us these days, you just see you as, how can we, how can we erase that thought? I beg, from? just forget about them. Okay. I, I want to emphasize this. You know, one of the best things you can ever read in this area is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount. Let's read some of this stuff. Let's go to Matthew 5. Maybe this will help us a little bit. Verse 38. Interesting. Give us an NLT. You know, Jesus was ridiculously not real. I mean, it's not real. If it's, I mean, you know. You have had the law that says the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye. And a tooth for a tooth. Let's go on. But I say, don't resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. Interesting. Let's keep reading. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat to. What's Jesus doing over here? Next verse. And if a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry two miles. Huh? Let's go on. <clears throat> Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. What? 
I'm not a bad brother. You have heard the Lord that says, love your neighbors and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Next verse. In that way, you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. What I'm asking you to do is not to do things because people are good. I'm asking us to do this because we are God's children. Now, negotiating that will happen to you by the help of the Spirit, each individual as they comes. But first of all, take this stand. Don't take the stand of what they are doing. That will give you a bad template to work with. Forget about them. Can I be honest with you? If I want to calculate and think about people who have done me evil for doing good in church, I will not pastor church anymore. In fact, I will get a dog near my house. I will teach it that when you see a Christian, want to be a church member, bite him. Huh? But can I be honest with you? With those who have done that to me, I have other hundreds like you here that has been a blessing and I'll be a blessing to you. So I cannot just focus on that one moment. Have you noticed that every year, dry season, rain season, don't come as we expect. Sometimes too long, too short, too rainy, too dry. But what do we do? We don't stop living. Praise God. For he gives his sunlight both to the evil and the good and the sense rain of the just. I want you to know primarily that you are living in a place that is bad. This world is bad. It's evil. You are the light of the world. When we say you are the light of the world, that presupposes that the darkness is around you. Am I might see this light over here. I really don't like them. But they have to put them for recording. It's just there. So that's where we are. We're just the light. We can't let the darkness tell us what to do. Uh-uh. The light must shine. Okay, I know sometimes you are tired. Okay? You, this person is doing you too much evil. Take your light. Go shine somewhere else. Are, <laughs> are we here? I'm just, but, but don't let whatever they do enter into your heart and delay you. Uh, you have to, anybody in business here? Anybody in business here? You know what I'm talking about now? Some people will be so sometimes, sometimes nasty, they won't pay you. You will not say, every customer now, I'm coming after you with a razor blade. Razor blade. You can't do that. So you're going to have to just wake up and believe the best. And when you are wounded, get healed. Hallelujah. And just move on. By the way, can I be honest? You yourself, you are not always kind. And the person who you are unkind to is thinking that, are you never let you? <laughs> so I'm not always kind. Like for instance, there's somebody that I, I just need to talk to and I keep forgetting. I, I was busy repenting yesterday and today. I just needed to just this person, and, and I noticed some days ago that the person was not looking as vibrant as this, this person used to look. And I was thinking of taking the time to do that, but other things just got my attention. And I'm saying, Lord, please, give me a chance to be able to get back again. I hope I'll see this person again. Just give me a chance. Yeah. So we don't, we, we're not always right. We're not always on point. We're not always, sometimes, you know, I can say all this and still wound my wife once in a while. Like I was saying last Sunday, said, said truth and message will follow you. Once in a while, you tell truth and message. Do what you want to do. Then after a while, say, truth and message. You know? <laughs> you know? That's who we are. You get that? So we must do that. It doesn't mean that we don't get angry. We don't, no, no, no. We get angry. We, 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 I can tell you, I can sit you down and say, oh boy, you're messing up. Come on, big time. Close here. You're a fool, man. And it's after that. Let's go and drink coke. Huh? <laughs> Let's go and drink coke. We, we, we have to do that. We have, we have to. We can't, we can't. That's who we are. Our Heavenly Father will talk to us, will fight us, and still say, I love you. I'll give you something and bless you. Is that right? That's the way it is. So let's have that being persistent. Oh, let's read this verse. First Peter 4, the last verse there. In fact, the book of Peter was talking about people doing things wrongly against you. And what do you do with it? Now look at this. I love this. Chapter 4, verse 19. Give us an NKJV, then we'll read Amplify, a message Bible, then we'll read our book quickly. All right. 
Therefore, let those who suffer. My brother, are you looking? According to the will of God. You suffer according to the will of God. You do what is right. Let them commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. You will not always be considered right. You will not always be celebrated for doing what is right. You will not always, even in the office. And of course, sometimes office is like, an, it's like a jungle of all human behaviors and human antics. Somebody is laughing with you, is planning behind you to see that that seat, you are removed from it. It's, it's normal. Let's read it in Message Bible, then Amplified. So if you find life di- difficult, oh, see, I love this one. So if you find life difficult because you are doing what God said, take it in stride. Trust him. He knows what he's doing and he will keep on doing it. Let's look at Amplified Bible, Amplified. Therefore, those who are ill-treated and suffer in accordance with the will of God must continue to do right and commit their soul for safekeeping to the faithful creator. That's the best way to say it, right? So, let's just do that. Praise the Lord. My desire is that one day this world will be over. We'll stand before the throne of God and God will say, Omo Amin here. We'll say that they are going to be alive. We'll say, try. Not, ah. Oh. Bolisa. That's Joko. Angel. Efolonje. Anyway. The word is over. Don't worry. Eternity, you will learn. I like to enter heaven and they sing heaven's as an anthem. I know it's not arise, oh, compatriot. <laughs> Praise God. All right, let's do our reading. Great. I think no more, no more questions. We are okay. You got a question, my brother. Thank you. All right, so let's ask. Can we just wait for us for a few minutes? We're going to read the next few minutes. Okay. Microphone. Yes, somebody here. Uh, 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 I hope that won't do feedback there. Let's see what it will do. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I believe everything is from the mind. It's from the mind. Mind, yes. What are the mindful exercises? Okay. Or what can we do to program our minds into thank doing you. kindness? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you. We need to get a little bit more accurate. It's not always from the mind. There's a place beyond our mind called our heart. That's where Jesus lives in us. Now, our mind will have, our mind is like parlor. Our heart is like the bedroom. You know, in the parlor, anybody can enter there. But bedroom, you don't enter there. But usually, your stuff is in the bedroom. Your resources, your clothes, your money is in the bedroom. You don't hang it in the parlor. Anybody want I'm a You know, all your goods. So, what do you do? You work on your heart there. So that when you enter your mind and you are challenging your mind, you can. That's why we have to read our Bible and pray. Prayer happens in the heart. Reading Bible happens in the heart, and they solidify our heart. So that when we now enter our mind and we start having thought and struggle, we'll be able to balance. But when we don't have a strong heart, and that's why when you're reading your Bible, it doesn't look like as if you are doing anything or praying. It's just like you are wasting your time. But it's like eating. When you are eating now. You think it's only in the mouth. No, it goes to our system, start fortifying the vitamins, the carbohydrates, the protein. It's doing all that work inside of us. So that when disease comes, we have to stand it. And the Bible said the food of the spirit is what? The word of God. So it will strengthen us. So I will say that the way to fortify yourself is get the word of God into your heart like your bank. And when you need a withdrawal, you can take it out. Is that all right? Like today now, we have made some more deposits. If you think about it more, more deposit will happen there. But let me warn you. Can I warn you? People are not always kind. A.K.A. including yourself. And take it in strides. Like we say, take it in strides. Maybe something just happened to them. And imagine I just finished fighting with my wife and I'm going to walk. And lady said, Oh God, they walked yesterday. They didn't finish and I can't get it ready. You're already mad from home. So if you show more madness, we know that it's Good measure, press down, second to go down, run you over. We know that. So what do you do? Redeem your image after a while. Call her back, say, I'm sorry, please. Let's handle it quite well. Yeah. This is another way of kindness. Kindness is learning to go back like Shimei. You know Shimei? You know Shimei did something really cruel. And he said, King, I'm really sorry. Is that right? One of the greatest phrases from a believer's mouth is, I'm sorry. One of the greatest phrases you can ever say is, I'm sorry. 
Oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, man, forgive me. Hallelujah. That's it. All right. I had one more to eat, taking the ballet. Oh, pass them out the ballet. You know, just <laughs> go, 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 right. And then we go. All right. Okay. I think we are all right. Okay. Stack him. Let's clap for us. It comes. We are reading what to do when faith seems weak and victory is lost. Hallelujah. What do we do? We are finished section one, right? I'm going to section two today. Hallelujah. Church, chapter 2, be sure the promises of God cover the things you ask for. Step 2, be sure the promises of God, the scriptures, cover the things you ask for and are believing for. Faith, Bible faith, is based on the word of God. It comes by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If you get out beyond the word of God, you have no basis for faith, and you will be in trouble. It seems to me people ought to have a little sense. I do not understand how some people can go around spouting off things, endeavoring to believe, and calling it faith, when it is only presumption and folly. As a 15-year-old boy, just four months old in the Lord, I knew better than that. For example, this is an account of the first step of faith I ever made in my life after receiving salvation. I had been bed fast four months. I stayed bed fast a total of 16 months. The doctor wanted me on a soft diet. Some of the things he wanted me to eat, I did not like. I would almost have to hold my nose when they brought the food to me. Under normal circumstances, it would have made me sick to eat those foods due to allergies and other things. Just the smell made me sick to my stomach. So I would pray each time before I ate. Now, Lord... The doctor says, I need this. It is the right kind of food. There is food value in it. It is valuable to my physical being. So I pray and claim my, by faith that this food will have no ill effect upon me. I will not be sick in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Then I ate it. I have been eating those same foods all those years since and they have never yet made me sick. My faith worked. It worked because the scriptures teach that food is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. First Timothy 4, 4 to 5. It worked because this was something that was good and necessary. Now, I will relate a similar, yet entirely different situation to show you something. From the time I was four until I was 15, I drank coffee. As a little boy, it had a lot of milk in it. But by the time I was 11, I was drinking coffee as strong as Grandpa drank. I got up one morning and ate breakfast. The same things I had been eating for years. I drank my coffee just like I always had. About the time I got up from the table, I had an attack of acute indigestion. I was so sick. It seemed like dying would be a relief. I could not figure out what it was. The next morning, the same thing happened, just as soon as I finished breakfast. So I began to leave off things. I left off this, and I left off that, and I left off the other. As a last result, I left off the coffee. The moment I did, everything was all right. I didn't have an attack. Then I began to reason. Maybe it was because I drank too much coffee on an empty stomach before I started eating breakfast. So I ate breakfast first and then drank my coffee. Again, I was sick. 
Then I tried eating my breakfast and just sipping a little coffee along with it. Still, I was sick. The only thing I could do was to leave off coffee entirely. Now, this coffee incident happened when I was staying with my other grandparents. When I became totally bedfast, I came back to my mother's parents' home. This grandmother, not knowing of my experience, asked the doctor if I could have coffee. No, I don't want him to have coffee. He has drunk coffee all his life, she said. Well, if he has, then it would be all right to give him a cup of weak coffee at breakfast, the doctor said. So they brought me a cup of weak coffee. I drank it and I liked to have died. Someone might ask, why didn't you believe God? I had enough sense to know my faith would not work there. Coffee has no food value. The doctor didn't want me to have it in the first place. I knew on the inside, just as a 15-year-old boy, that my faith would work on that food. It had food value. My body needed it. The doctor said so. I never even tried to get my faith to work on the coffee. I knew it would not work. One winter night, after a seminar meeting in Tulsa, my wife and I and some others were invited to someone's home to eat. On the way over in the car, it was mentioned we are going to have chili. Our hostess made chili that was out of this world. One man in the car spoke up and said, I can't eat chili. What am I going to do? Are they having anything else? No, they are not going to have anything else. We knew we had sampled that chili before and had, had arranged this for that very reason. This man said, I have ulcers. I can't eat chili. I said, brother, don't bother about it at all. I sanctify it and you can eat all you want. It won't have any effect on you. He told me year afterwards that he almost questioned it, but then he decided, no, I won't doubt it. He said, you know, Brother Egin, I ate one bowl of chili. Then I ate another. I finally had three bowls of chili, and it never had any effect upon me. Not only that, but from that day to this, I never had any other, and I, I never have had another symptom of an ulcerated stomach. He had a right to believe for that. Have enough sense to know where your faith will work and where it won't work. And do not get out beyond the word of God. Beyond the word? You are in trouble when you get out beyond the word of God. That's what bothers me about many of the things some people are teaching, new revelations, and so forth. A certain teacher visited one of my services one night. Someone conducting the meeting recognized him and asked him to say a few words. While he was on the platform talking, I knew this in my spirit. This man is not right. He's not for real. Now, I do not mean that we are to have a spirit of criticism and fault finding. We should not have that. But I believe the Spirit of God will alert us and save us from problems and trouble if we will listen to him. Though this man was saved and filled with the Spirit, I sensed in my spirit that he had gotten off. If you do not listen to the Bible and stay with the Bible, you can get off. In the process of time, this man was teaching some meetings in a large city. A friend of mine, himself a Bible teacher for more than 35 years, told me what happened. He said to me, I'm embarrassed, Brother Egin, that I could be so misled, so taken in. Most of the folks in my Bible class attended his meetings. There were some things that were not altogether right all along, but I wanted to give the man the benefit of the doubt. Then one night, 
that poor fellow really got off on some things. He had been teaching for several weeks. Then he got into this order. That's how they do. They lead you little by little. My friend continued. After that session was over, I went up to him. I said, now, brother, I have been going along with you on some minor things that didn't amount to much anyhow. But that which you put up tonight, I held my Bible up. You are going to have to show me from the Bible. I can't find it in the Bible. You will have to give me chapter and verse or I'm not going to accept it. This man said to him, Oh, you will not find what I'm teaching in that thing. I'm way out beyond that. I know much more than what's in there. When they know so much more than what's in the Bible, they are too far out for me. No man who had any respect for God will ever call the Bible a thing, yet people were misled. My friend, a Bible teacher of more than 35 years, said to me, what I hate about it, Brother Egin, is that when I try to pull my group out, we cooperated with the meetings, I lost a lot of them. They were carried off. A little Chinese woman who had been Buddhist most of her life was not carried off, yet she was only four months old in the Lord when this happened. Her parents had come over from the old country where she was a little girl. They went into business. She and her sister took over the business. When the parents became aged, the mother had become bedfast. Doctors could not help her. They prayed to Buddha. They had a statue of Buddha worth thousands of dollars in the basement of their beautiful home. But the old mother did not get healed. They read about a healing revival going on in town. It was at the church where my friend, the Bible teacher of 35 years, taught a large Bible class and decided to carry the old woman to that meeting. She received healing and salvation. The young Chinese woman was born again. Then she got her father and her sister saved. As a new baby, she went with my friend's Bible class to this series of meetings. She told me when I was in that church holding meetings some time later. The first time I had that fellow, something on the inside of me said, leave that fellow alone. Don't go back to hear him anymore. He is false. Think about it. These older Christians some of them saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, 35 years and more, were taken in. A baby, not even spirit-filled, knew the difference. The other swallowed it and got all messed up. Isn't that tragic? There is no need for such a thing happening if we will just learn to listen to our hearts, our spirits. That's what the little Chinese woman did. Though she was only four months old in the Lord, on the inside of her, she just knew that something was wrong. And what she had him teach the night she was there might not even have been so wrong. It was later that he began to put out a lot of false stuff. I knew, just as a youngster, only four months old in the Lord, that my faith would not work on coffee. So I didn't try to make it work. I knew it would work on the food. Presumption. Be certain that the promises of God cover what you are believing for. You have a right to believe for anything God's word promises you. But if you get out beyond that, then you are out on presumption or foolishness. For instance, sometimes single people, because... You can, because you can have what you say, will pick out someone and claim them as a mate. They have a right, because there is scripture for it, to claim a wife or husband. But they do not necessarily have the right just to pick somebody out and say, 
I'm going to claim him or her. That person had something to do with it. They have the right to believe God for your wife or husband, but they should let the Lord send them one. A young graduate from a denominational seminary was in some of our meetings in Texas. He had been filled with the Holy Spirit and had been kicked out of his denomination. He took my wife and me out for lunch one day when he announced, I'm getting married. Who, oh, my wife said, who is the lucky girl? He proceeded to tell us about a woman who sang in the choir at the church he now attended. He did not even know her name. He had never met her. He just liked the looks of her sitting up there in the choir. He said, I claimed her. Brother Egan preaches, you can have what you see. I've already said it. My wife asked, and you never even have had a date with her? No, I never have shaken her hand or even seen her up close. Well, when he got up close, she might not have looked as good as she did from a distance. Besides that, she would have something to say about it. He cannot override our will. He has a right to claim a wife. The Bible says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Proverbs 18.22 He has a right to claim a wife, but he should let God bring him the one he wants for him. I started preaching when I was 17. It seemed as if someone was always trying to make a match for me. One girl came and told me that God showed her she was supposed to marry me. Well, I said, when he tells me, I will accept it. He never did tell me. So things would be funny if they were not so pathetic. Lives have been ruined over things like that. Let's stop there today. Thank you. It's a long chapter. I think so. Yes. Uh, what is saying? I think you learn from there. Single guys in the house. Did you hear that? That's so important as we face life. You know, this sounds pathetic. This sounds funny, but it's not pathetic. People were leaving to go abroad last year, year before last year. So one young child just came to me. His parents, they were all together. He said, Pastor, I want you to pray with me that my family will leave the country in four months' time. They had no passport. They had nothing. Came to me, told me, he said, Pastor, I'm claiming, I'm trusting God. I just laughed. They are still around. <laughs> I guess the young man, his friends, parents left. They are leaving. Everybody's leaving. I claim it for much too. But you have to go by the way of embassy and visa and form filling and get them to be over there and something. All right. Do you know something as I close? This may sound strange to many of us. Many of us today, we don't refer, the Bible, we don't refer to the Bible anymore, whatever we are asking. We just generate things up. It's like you generate your own password to open your account. You know? So, we must learn to ask ourselves, what does the word of God say about something? Or else we get disappointed at the end of the day. So, let's be aware. Let's give our offering. It's been a wonderful time today. Great. Wow. And that's why you notice when I teach, I get to the Bible from this point of angle, from that point of angle, so we can be convinced from the word of God. But just saying things in church and de making declarations, I declare that by the end of this year, you'll be a millionaire. Says who? That word, millionaire, is not even in the Bible. So what are you claiming for? The Bible says you supply all my needs. Yeah, but it didn't say that. I give you millions. Actually, millions no longer big money now. It's just 1,000 of 1,000 other notes. I hope you know that. Okay, all right, beautiful. Let's give our offering. Get out of here. Dear Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you have learned today. Thank you for the repercussions 
the consequences, the good ones that we see out of this. Thank you for helping us to go and even make changes in our lives, in our family, individual lives. Thank you for helping us to do so in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory and praise in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's give. All right. Oh, wonderful time today. Sometimes I notice that after I'm talking like that, I forget to give my offering. So let's just start doing it quickly as we can. All right, wonderful. Praise God. God is good. It's been a quiet, lovely, deep time today. On Friday, it's Good Friday, so we have 7 a.m. prayer. We're having prayer retreat all through this weekend. 7 a.m. Give us that on the screen. And then on Saturday, 7 a.m. Sunday will be a joint service. We just come do the greatest prayer we can ever pray. Hallelujah. And then Monday, 7 a.m. So we have the many part of the days available to us. Let's come pray. And certain specific things I want to start doing in your prayer life to bring outstanding results. We will see that. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Let's go home. Can we get up on our feet? Say this with me. God is my heavenly father. Is a good God and is merciful. I'm his child. Therefore, I'll be good and be merciful. I will live like this because I'm a child of God. God is helping me to help others. God is strengthening me to strengthen others. I will not be harsh and cruel. I'll be kind and be loving. Wherever I go, the love of Jesus will manifest through me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Let's share the grace together. Grace for Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. That's all beside you. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Be in the house of the Lord forevermore. Have a lovely, lovely night. Thank you for coming.